You gotta try to keep that's, that's, see, that's what's happening. The, game, man. I know, the way awesome. you're maintaining your balance oh. is to move this foot. You need to find your balance. You were totally off balance. I know, that's what you gotta learn not to do. So I'm a player coach. Um, trying to weasel my way out of the player end of player coach. <laughs> Tempest the power hitter. Oh, we talked him up. <laughs> we don't usually win, from what I understand. Um, I think everybody hits the ball, but the fielding gets a little dicey. <laughs> so it's more like a football score, from what I understand. Find it. Our equipment came from a yard sale, I think, and most of it looks like it fits seven-year-olds. The ball doesn't quite fit in the glove. We had one bat, which is a very heavy bat, and it was too heavy for many people. And we had probably five or six mitts. Um, no, maybe it was probably about seven mitts, three or four of which are for children. Um, and we had one ball. So uh, last year we bought another ball, and this year we bought another bat and two more balls. Yeah, and I've heard you lost a couple too. Yeah, we sent a couple over the cliff. I love baseball. <laughs> the desire to win always gets in the way. Um, but the desire to win doesn't have anything to do with the desire to do something properly. So I think you can desire to do something properly without um, getting caught up in doing it perfectly and winning at the end. And so the sort of um, cheesy teaching <laughs> is that if you've done it properly, then you've sort of won. We both have our hindrances, <laughs> our skirts, uh, their beer. <laughs> Murray, Lawrence, and Ashley, Franklin, Kevin, Miles, Dwayne, Ronnie, Wayne, and David. Our batting order. That's yep. the batting order. Yeah. You told us about all practices at the game. <laughs> you got us nervous now. Two hundred seventy feet to home place. We're not scared of the boat. I know the road to win. Really, Big time. Oh yeah. <laughs> we want to win this fair and square and say we won. <laughs> and then the next person who hits, he might actually make it all the way around if the next person hits. Does that make sense? No. No. <laughs> okay. So I'm up to bat. Right. I'm up to bat. After the fifth inning, it's 16 to 3. The firemen are up. Monks are at bat. Firemen in the field. My cap's on backwards. Yellow grub, yeah. Ready at the plate. Strike one. 
Strike two. That a rip. Gampo Abbey is a traditional Tibetan Buddhist inspired monastery uh, founded by Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche in 1984. There was something about Nova Scotia that Rinpoche thought was uh, very workable, that people here were close to the reality of life and still had uh, their, the good heart was not so covered over with uh, slickness. I think this is one of the most beautiful spots um, that I've ever been to. It's dramatic, it's wild, and yet at the same time there's something that's uh, heartbreakingly old and uh, gentle about it. I felt a peacefulness here and a safety that I had never felt any other place. Part of the reason why it's such a good place is because it's so remote. There aren't a lot of distractions. And when you come here, then there's pretty much only one thing to do, which is what we do here. I've heard one of our founding nuns say that the Abbey doesn't give you what you want, it gives you what you need. So there is an intensity of this inward um, contemplation. So one begins to see the cause of one's suffering. <laughs> And it gives, a monastic life gives the space in which we can work with that and get rid of it. Buddhism is a religion, but usually we think of it more as a science of mind. So basically, uh, Buddhism offers us uh, a means for looking at mind and understanding mind in terms of what is it about mind that would uh, cause one to be happy or what would it be uh, that causes suffering and basically so once we sort of figure that out then we can be of uh, benefit to others as well as ourselves another word for suffering is dissatisfaction so you may be living a very comfortable life in fact i i would say for myself that before i actually became uh, a nun my life was wonderful. Uh, I wouldn't have really thought particularly I was suffering greatly, but it's a very, very subtle sort of suffering, this very subtle dissatisfaction. And we keep looking for something else. We think something else will fulfill us. And this search for something else doesn't fulfill us, it just sort of gets us involved in another project, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the Buddha said, no, that just gets you embedded in another kind of suffering. So the only way to uh, get out of it is actually to begin to look deeply into oneself. I've seen these soap commercials recently, you know, a person sitting there and you know, it's usually a very sexy person, I can't do the lotus thing, and they're, you know, they're, they're kind of floating, and they have this nice kind of pastel halo, and uh, I want to know where to get that. <laughs> That's not what we do here, but 
If a bar of soap could only help me do that. <laughs> Most of what we do here is working with the cultivation of mindfulness and compassion. Mindfulness uh, basically means that you are right in the moment. Your mind is right in the moment. So for example, if you're washing the dishes, your mind is right with the action of washing the dishes. You aren't fantasizing something or running through some popular song that you like in your mind, but your mind is right on the moment. So that's what mindfulness is. I don't think Buddhism and baseball have been mixed before, but basically uh, the reason we f refer to maybe sitting practice as practice, meditation, is that it's really just practice for uh, everyday life. So in whatever we're doing, we can carry our mindfulness into what we're doing. So whether it's swinging a bat or cooking a meal, scrubbing a toilet, whatever it happens to be. So it's not outside the realm of, of uh, our mind training. But. Our team is not set on winning. So it's just great fun. We get clobbered each year. They're very kind to us because, you know, they're, that's what they do. They play a lot of baseball. If one team just can't get people out, uh, they might score. They can score as many points as they want until we get them out. So there's no set time. In the whole afternoon. It could Part even be the whole afternoon. Next batter, Hurricane Herbie Young. That's a good hit. Then we got players on third and at first. Steve Hinckley at bat. That's a good hit there. That's a fine hit, right down the middle. Oh, nice hit. Oh, oh. I'm still not familiar with softball lingo here, so forgive me. Oh, we got some confusion on the field. Oh, out of the glove. Another run running in. There's a high one. <laughs> Three out. Whatever well, works. <laughs> and uh, oh, Gabby Webb comes in at that, and the fire department <laughs> hit the field. 321. The early bird gets the worm. Yeah, they know their, their place in the universe, I think, uh, when they're out there on the ocean, 20 miles offshore, you know, gone for, some of them will fish off St. Paul's Island or whatever, or, or fish, you know, they might, it might take them three hours to get to the spot where they're fishing, you know, it's uh, all this time on the boat traveling and, uh, yeah, it's a big ocean. Yeah, uh, I've been blessed, uh, yeah. you know, like the ocean has been really good to me, the sea has been good to me since I, since I went into this business and uh, I always respect it. You, uh, you can learn something new about it every day, but you, uh, but you have to respect it. You have to respect the weather and uh, Mother Nature, what, how she can turn her hand. I've been fishing since I'm 15 or 16 years old, yeah, and my son is a fisherman. But